Samara is a truly beautiful city, very atmospheric. As I keep walking along the streets of Samara, it just strikes me as a truly cultural center of Russia because there are so many theaters, museums, churches, cathedrals, you name it. The list goes on and on. Sometimes just buildings, old ones, beautiful, outstanding architecture. Some of them are literally falling apart, but they are not uh, taken down um, because I believe the government is trying to preserve the um, the history and the old look of the city. And I think it's really nice. For example, here we see a museum of military history. This place is called Kuybyshev uh, Square and it's the largest in Europe um, in terms of its area. It takes up 17.4 hectares and there are four gardens at each corner of the square and also the Opera and Ballet Theatre on the other side of that building. In front of the building we can see there is a monument and that's a monument to Kuybyshev. Not many people know that Samara used to be named as Kuybyshev. It was named after an important political figure, a revolutioner of the Soviet Union, Kuybyshev. And Kuybyshev as a city in 1941 was destined to become the reserve capital of the Soviet Union. So the city turned into the largest industrial center of the Soviet Union in which gas, automobile, burying, oil refining, aviation and defense industries developed. Due to the critical situation in Moscow by mid-October 1941, the decision to evacuate the capital of the USSR to Kuybyshev was taken by Stalin. So why Kuybyshev? And there were several reasons for that. On the one hand, the proximity of the city to Moscow, which is around 1000 kilometers, the presence of a powerful military group there, and the country's largest railway junction connecting Europe with Asia, and also the readiness of the Kuybyshev authorities to organize a large scale evacuation. In addition, dozens of defense factories were evacuated to the city and the region in the summer and autumn of the 1941, and over 30 temporary airfields were built. During the war, the Kuybyshev of Olga region increased oil production, and um, the largest gas pipeline in the USSR was built uh, in the territory of the region. In October 1941, the Soviet government, the foreign diplomatic corps, the Bolshoi Theater, prominent figures of Soviet art, and also Stalin's family members were evacuated from Moscow to Kuybyshev. In conditions of the strictest secrecy, Stalin's bunker was built in the center of the city. It is impossible to overestimate Kuybyshev's contribution to military aircraft construction. Only one example, for the entire war, 32,000 legendary Il-2 were built in Kuybyshev. Art also contributed to the victory over the enemy. It was in Kuybyshev that Dmitry Shestakovich completed the famous Seventh Symphony. The Gorky Drama Theater staged 39 performances during the war. It looks like an excursion. She's telling some historical facts about this place. This is a monument. Uh, I guess allegedly it's built uh, on the grave. Uh, it's to the memory of uh, a famous Russian soldier and pilot, Chkalov. And this is a theater named after Maxim Gorky. So now I have uh, a couple of hours to walk around and uh, then I will need to come back here for the excursion. Another interesting historical building in 1941 or to 1943. In this building there was a mission of Sweden, Sweden uh, Kingdom. 
so as you can see there are a lot of sites to visit here here are the signs and everything is really close in the center just in a walking distance like two minutes from one place to another so this is a roman catholic church a really impressive and beautiful building look at the architecture Uh, it was built in 1906 and restored in 1996. Uh, it's open from 9 to 7 p.m. but there is a lunch break from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. So right now it's open. I guess I can walk in. There is a, a QR code that you can use to hear a virtual excursion. And right next to the church this building is the famous Russian writer's house Tolstoy he lived here uh, during his childhood and youth with his uh, father-in-law and now it's a museum here is uh, some information about this museum uh, the building, the museum complex uh, features the building itself, including the main house and a wing and the restored yard buildings uh, such as ha summer house and a well. So you need to walk inside to buy a ticket. Um, a ticket costs 150 rubles and the entrance is here this year the, they are celebrating 140 years from the uh, Alexei Tolstoy's uh, birthday Alexei Nikolaevich Tolstoy was one of the most versatile classics he was a Russian writer who wrote in many genres, but specialized in science fiction and historical novels. He lived here uh, in this house on the second floor in an apartment of five rooms. So here on the second floor, that was his apartment. Despite having opposed the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917, he was able to return to Russia six years later and live a privileged life as a highly paid author, reputedly a millionaire who adopted his writings to conform to the line laid down by the Communist Party. Alexei was the youngest son of Count Nikolai Tolstoy and Alexandra Turgenieva. After birth, Alexei received from his stepfather uh, a surname. At the same time, his mother waged uh, a long-term lawsuit with the court about the recognition of the child by his uh, father, which um, ended only in 1901 after the death of Nikolai Tolstoy. So Alexei became Tolstoy at the age of 17 and along with the title inherited a large sum. Alexei Tolstoy's mother adored books. She wrote herself and tried to convey her love of literature and writing to her son. So she instructed him to write long detailed letters and at the age of 10 she pushed him to create the first story. Nevertheless, in 1901, he entered the Technological Institute in St. Petersburg. He studied there for several years, but never received a diploma, because in parallel with his studies, he began to write and realized that literature was his vocation. He translated um, the Italian fairy tale Pinocchio into Russian style. Every child knows this story tale. It is called the Golden Key. So after returning from immigration in uh, 1923, Alexei Tolstoy went from an ordinary Soviet author 
to the favorite writer of Joseph Stalin. He wrote several satirical works about immigration, and in 1928 he published the second volume of The Road to Calvary, for which he received a record payment fee among the authors of the Novi Mir magazine. The book brought him all Union fame. Tolstoy would uh, take on any job, simultaneously demonstrating loyalty to the Soviet regime. In 1930s, he finally entered the literary elite of the USSR, and after the death of Maxim Gorky, he became the number one writer in the country. We need to turn around the corner of this building to the backyard and there is actually nothing special like no signs whatsoever for this place like as a touristic attraction so the entrance uh, to the bunker looks like this it's in the backyard of this institute uh, of culture and uh, the open hours are from 11 a.m. till 3 p.m. And uh, I have just talked to the person inside and um, he told me that uh, you need to register beforehand. Uh, I was lucky enough uh, because there is now, uh, now it's uh, 12, 12 p.m. and the next excursion uh, group will be at 3 p.m. and you need to register they they will write down your surname and you need to come uh, 10 minutes before and buy the ticket and you can only use cash uh, no cards no online booking they don't have even a website uh, but you can register by coming physically here or um, on the phone, like you can call and register for the excursion. And I was also told that uh, sometimes it's full and uh, people register in advance, like days and weeks and months in advance. So you need to take that into consideration if you need to if you want to visit that place it's better to make a call and leave your surname beforehand the excursion takes an hour one hour uh, because uh, it's 12 uh, floors down and then of course 12 floors up and uh, there will be a tour guide telling everything about the place um, I also asked if the filming and taking photos is allowed and he said yes, you can um, film it, but uh, not the uh, tour guide. A lot of people, around 20 people I guess. The ticket costs uh, 250 rubles. Stalin's bunker is the everyday colloquial name of a defensive structure created as a reserve location for Stalin. It was built in 1942. It was only declassified in 1990. Now it's a museum of civil defense, but the bunker itself is still in the working order and it's functioning and it can still serve its purpose. It was built in nine months, from February to October 1942. All engineers were taken a lifetime non-disclosure of state secrets and therefore even the residents of the city living nearby had no idea what was going on on the site. Machines and mechanics were not used in the construction in order to keep it top secret. In less than a year, 25,000 cubic meters of soil were excavated and 5,000 cubic meters of concrete were laid. 
First, reinforced concrete monolith was laid, and then metal assembly structures were installed. Each tubing has six segments and weighs half a ton. They are connected with bolts, and a lead gasket between them seals the seams. Behind the tubing is a waterproofing layer, and behind it there is a reinforced concrete monolith layer. Behind that layer is a meter-long sand pad, and then a meter-long clay, clay frame. At the top, there is a meter-long reinforced concrete monolith slab above it, and a meter-long sandy mattress, and a three-meter reinforced concrete monolith slab covers the entire courtyard of the Institute of Culture. If the most powerful aerial bomb at that time had hit this object directly from above, then people inside the bunker would not even feel the vibration of the air. The depth of the bunker is 37 meters, which is equal to 12-story building. For comparison, the depth of the Hitler's bunker in Berlin was 16 meters, while Churchill and Roosevelt had two floors each. The uh, bunker is designed to fit optimally 127 people or the maximum, maximum of 600. Uh, there is everything that can be needed to ensure autonomous survival for five days, including food, air, and so on. The temperature inside the bunker is maintained at 19 degrees Celsius, as this temperature is considered to be the most suitable for people in a military uniform. The recreation room of Joseph uh, Stalin is no more than 20 square meters, modest but cozy. Vaulted ceiling in pink and blue imitation of windows. All of this is created to minimize claustrophobia and visually expand the space so that there is no feeling of being in a bunker. There are portraits of Suvorov and Kutuzov. There are six doors in the room and uh, one of them is the entrance and another one leads to the toilet and the others do not lead anywhere. These false doors have been the subject of many guesses and hypotheses. Uh, some people believe that uh, when someone is present in the room, it makes an impression as the room is well guarded, that behind every door there are guards. Uh, but there's another version that extra doors um, remove the oppressive feeling of a closed space. After all, behind every door you automatically assume a corridor, another room, or even a street. Stalin's office is also the Politburo meeting room. It is lighter and more spacious here, but the interior is aesthetically formal. Behind the Stalin's desk, which is wide and long, there is a large map of military operations. Few people know, but Samara was one of the main builders of the USSR space program. It was here that the Vostok rocket was assembled, on which the first flight into space in the history of mankind was made. It was here that the airspace power of the Soviet Union was formed, and it would be strange if such memorable events were not immortalized in the history of the city. In uh, in 2001, on Lenin Avenue, a real R-7 rocket was installed. The history of this rocket began in 1984, when this copy was made for training uh, of the Space Forces of the USSR. On October the 1st, 2001, the grand opening of the monument took place and the time to coincide with the 40th anniversary of the first manned flight into space. This monument is 68 meters high and weighs over 20 tons. The monument became very popular and on April 12, 2007, next to the rocket, the opening of the Samara Cosmic Museum took place, where the history of rocket science is presented. Soon this museum received an award as the best touristic project in Samara. The exposition is divided into two parts. The first includes space instruments and spacecraft models. The second part is devoted not so much to technology but uh, to people in space, their lifestyle and everyday activities. The exhibition is well equipped with interactive components that demonstrate how it all works together 
Spacecrafts designed for photography and mapping are presented here together with other exciting exhibits as engines and so on. Cosmos food. You can buy it here at the entrance. Tonight we are staying at this wonderful hotel which is uh, located 20 kilometers uh, away from Samara city and uh, just look at that guys it's amazing um, it's a unique place uh, this one is a restaurant and this building is the hotel building uh, it's a nice nice warm summer evening this is the entrance the territory the gates are closed for the night so it's safe if you have a car to park here this is the hotel building people are relaxing outside just check this out there is even a swimming pool with sun beds and a lot of space to just relax and enjoy your time here and another wonderful thing about this place is this recreational area where you can play darts chess even ride a bike table tennis hockey hockey hi <laughs> and you can even um, make barbecue you can set the fire and cook barbecue meat it's allowed here behind this building there is uh, more parking space so like this you can cook whatever you want here here's a sink very convenient if you need to wash something <laughs> there's even a TV set some tables this is the restaurant what it looks inside so for breakfast here you can have coffee or tea and even make a fresh juice there are different types of honey and jam bread Nice music is playing. Куда поедешь?